Hey everyone, Vladimir is here. In our previous lesson of multi-platform game development, we have implemented an enemy, but, well, the enemy is not attacking or anything. So I think it's a good opportunity now to start working on that. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to make the enemy issue the commands to our logic, which will indicate where the next attack will be. So if player stays in the fields that are going to be attacked, he will sustain damage if he's not dodging it in time. So without further ado, let me switch to my Android Studio. So first things first, uh, let's get back to our enemy sprite. Here we will need a timer, which will say, uh, which will count the seconds since the last attack, and um, a timer which will set the next attack. You know when will the next attack happens? Uh, as soon as our previous attack timer timer surpasses the interval between the attacks, uh, the enemy will issue the attack command. We want it a bit randomized, so the every interval. Every new interval will be somewhat randomly generated, at least partly. So, first things first, let us declare the timer variables. It's going to be float values, which can't calculate times in libgdx. So it's private float time since attack. And uh, another float for next attack time. We will also need some base constant on which we will you know, generate the intervals of our attacks. So let's make a private static float final float variable base attack time, which was equal to three seconds. And we'll add to those three seconds like one or two randomized seconds. Let's add the function uh, reset attack timer in which we essentially say the time since attack is zero, which will reset our countdown, and we'll generate the next interval. Next attack time is going to be base attack time plus, I don't know, let's take the random value of uh, math utils random of two. So the every attack will be timed between three and five seconds. Uh, let's call this reset attack time on when we call the constructor and we'll also need to You know add an update function which Well <laughs> add to those timers and compare them if it's time to attack so public void update Which you're probably already used to if you follow this tutorial uh, Which will increase the time since attack by Delta and if time since attack uh, surpasses the next attack time, we're going to issue the command at this point. But the thing is, we don't really want to directly um, access the logic, simply because it will make cross-referencing between classes. And um, I think the best idea here would be to make a public interface, which will be implemented in game logic and passed to our enemy, so it will be called on every whenever the enemy wants to attack. Public interface enemy attack. Uh, enemy attack listener, which will implement on attack function. Well, which will declare on attack function which will accept uh, the array of tiles which are going to be attacked. Basically it's going to be a boolean array of the size of the field like x by y and um, every if boolean is value is true for the tile then the warning effect is going to be created there. If the value is false nothing happens. Uh, so the usual thing. We will also need to save this listener, right? Um, I think we'll call it attack listener, public enemy attack listener, listener, ah, oh, make it private, it's uh, attack, 
After that, our enemy class will have to accept this listener. And um, actually <laughs> assign the value. So, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Let me update the transcript a bit. And um, on our attack, you see in our update function, as soon as we detect that the attack time has already passed our next attack time, we should call this listener enemy or attack listener on attack. But, oh no, we don't have the tiles uh, marked anyway. So what should we do? We should declare the array of those tiles. We're going to reuse it. Remember I said that reusing is better than initializing it at every attack. So let's declare the array of private boolean target tiles. It's going to be a two-dimensional array which uh, corresponds to the field. And uh, in our enemy constructor, let's initiate, initiate it new boolean. So here we just make an array of game logic plus one value. So it will be storing from zero to max base x values. That's our columns, and for every column we need to actually initialize the array. We had an array of arrays, and every value of that array is going to be an array by itself. So for int i equal from zero, i is lesser than game logic max base y plus one, i plus plus. We're going to initialize it. New boolean game logic max base y plus y so this will initiate our target tiles but we need to fill them somewhat so in our update function let's i think the best idea is to attack by patterns not by randomly selecting tiles but giving some patterns so that the player will be able to adapt or at least some attacks should feature patterns let's implement the simple attack pattern two columns which are going to be attacked consecutively so the player will be able to dodge them. And uh, we should pick the column 1, it will be completely random. I think we just math details, random, uh, game logic, max base x. Uh, but the trick is the second column should not be the same as the first column. So let's make column 2, like give the, the value 0 and then make sure we generate unique uh, random value for our column 2. Uh, while our column 1 is equal to column 2, we need to regenerate the value of column 2. It's not very effective, but it will get the job done because you can't really get <laughs> the infinite loop. I cannot imagine this happening. Uh, max base x. So yeah, we see that column 2 is going to be generated while those columns are equal. As soon as the column is not equal, you just drop it. And uh, after that, we go through all the rows and columns of our tile array and fill it relative, with relative values. 4 and x is 0. And logic. We're going to fill it, we're going to get go through the whole field variance. And then, um, you know, if the current column matches x, one of the selected columns, then we assign value to true. Actually, let's just pick the target tiles, x and y equals. Uh, it's a shorthand version of if we had written x equals column 1 or x equals column 2 then target tiles x and y equal to true else basically those five lines those five lines six seven lines sorry i can't count 
is the same as this one line. I like the shorthand description. Well, because the values inside if evaluate as a boolean. So this essentially <laughs> goes below. So we just make it short and we make introduce what you see on line 70. And after we're done, we're just passing the target tiles to our attack listener. Now, to actually implement the attack listener, we need to go back to game logic. And inside game logic, you just write that our game logic implements enemy, enemy attack listener. You don't have the methods yet, so press Alt Enter, choose implement methods. See, you have the method here. And uh, this method is going to be pretty simple. We're going to go through the whole array, see where which tiles are marked as true, and uh, for those tiles we create the effects, warning effects, which have we have implemented before. Uh, int x equals to zero, x uh, lesser than tiles length. It's safer that way to compare it to the array length than to base x because, well, that kind of save us from null pointer exception. We cannot go, not from null pointer exception, but we cannot go past the array indexes. So we're relatively safe here. And by relatively safe, I mean we're totally safe here. Tiles uh, x length y plus plus. So this goes through the whole array. And um, you remember our game screen where we had this warning effect create. Let's actually pass it back here to on attack. But uh, we place the coordinates. We don't need to call get effect engine anymore. We just use our effect engine variable. And you see it requires size evaluator, which basically should not belong to game logic. So let's refactor our warning effect a bit. Remove the size evaluator. Go back to our warning effect create function. Remove the size evaluator here. We're going to architect it the same way as we have player and enemy. The size evaluator is going to be passed to our draw function. It's that easy. Remove size evaluator from the methods and uh, from the init function too. Like, forget about it. Only keep it in our draw function. This It will accept our size evaluator, size evaluator. So, pretty good, but... It also touches the superclass method. We need to go to our base class effect. Uh, there's this draw function, which is going to accept size evaluator now. But yeah, that's not all. We need to refactor our effect engine too, uh, which will need to accept the size evaluator either. So yeah, that's the good reason why you should always plan ahead because when you try to change your system that has already has some things, the changes are just going to snowball and snowball and you will be spending more time refactoring than actually programming the game. But it's still not the case with us, so thank you. Um, after that, we are pretty sure that, yeah, the warning effect is going to be created, but we also need to, you know, update our screen update our enemy. So in our update function in the logic, let's just call enemy update pass the delta. After that, we also need to change the enemy uh, in, in initialization. When we create the new enemy object, pass this to it, meaning that we pass our game logic as our attack listener to it. After this, uh, if we launch the game, we should see something, I hope. Let's call it. Oh, wait, we cannot launch it because we should update our effect drawing. In our game screen, go to the render function, see where you have the effect engine call, draw, and add our size evaluator to the call. So after this, it should compile. Okay, we see the screen. Is the spider going to attack or not? Okay, so, yeah, something is wrong because, <laughs> well, it picked all the values. So we have to check what is going on. Let us check the warning effect first. Is it fine? Yeah, the warning effect is okay. 
but our effect engine yes in our mm, game logic we have not added the check right we only need to create the effective tiles x and y are set to true at this point let me see let me see and still not good enough so what is going on you need to debug it after we just have to check uh, what's going on in our enemy we have oh right after you issue the attack you need to reset the timer so that would the enemy would not <laughs> attack again instantly so in our update function after the attack has been issued on attack call reset attack time and see what's going on now see two columns enemy is picking two columns it's where the attacks are going to be and the player should be dodging them as you can see everything is working player is not taking the damage but it's a start it's a start and uh, i think in the next lesson we'll be finally be able to you know deal the damage to the player and uh, know when the game is lost at least so thank you for watching one thing that is left to do is to commit the changes of course and I'm going to go to our, my folder with uh, dodging hero. I'm going to check it with git status and see that six files have changed. Everything seems okay. Uh, and I'm going to commit the changes. I have added the attack function to the enemy. After that, I'm ready to push the, ch the changes to my repository. and i think that's it we've created the cool attack and you can see that the prototype is starting to get shape so thank you for staying in the next lesson i'm going to implement the lives of the player and maybe the you know defeat condition thanks again see you vladimir is out